Each and every one of us has an unlimited inner wellspring of spiritual power. You have the ability to transform, create, and heal anything upon which you set your heart and mind. Join me, Sarah Hall, as we learn how to uplift all aspects of your life through spiritual empowerment. Enjoy weekly guided meditations, spiritual discussions on a multitude of topics, and a chance to call in to receive channeled messages from the angels on your spiritual journey. I'm Sarah Hall, and this is Through the Eyes of the Angels. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to Project Bring Me to Life today. Today, we're going to be discussing what I believe is one of the pillars of true happiness, and that's gratitude. It's rather timely to be speaking about gratitude now in the wake of the holiday season when the busy rush of social engagements and shopping and holiday-related tasks comes in. True gratitude for the abundance, love, and light that we have in our lives is one of the core values that we're taking the time to celebrate at this time of year. But today, I want to discuss the spiritual value of gratitude. Gratitude is a very powerful state of being. It isn't merely a fleeting feeling that comes in and out when life hands you little goodies along the way. It's a state of mind that you can practice and cultivate to create overall peace and a deepened state of spiritual awareness. And the key to reaping the deepest benefits of practicing gratitude is to practice gratitude unconditionally. Be thankful for the storms in your life as well as for the smooth sailing. Buddhism Buddhism teaches us to be grateful for everything, period. Unconditional gratitude for life and its varied experiences cultivates a state of mindfulness such that you have the ability to see the world without judgments. Practicing a consistent state of gratitude helps you to be fully present and aware in the now. In this state, your ego must step out of the way. To remain grateful is to remain open and willing to set your ego aside, to set aside the urge to control or resist the flow of life. Gratitude cultivates immense trust and faith in life. It gives way to allowing and accepting all that is. When you allow and accept what you see in your life, you are literally setting aside all possible blockages or blinders to perceiving and experiencing the divine. When you allow and accept with trust and gratitude, your consciousness emerges from focusing on the past or on the future and it centers upon the now. The present moment is the only place in which we really experience the miracle of the divine. The miracles inherent in your own existence and your very nature. When we open our consciousness fully to the present moment, we inhabit the only place in the world in which we are able to receive the consciousness of God and the miracles it places at our fingertips. And so gratitude is an anchor to the present moment and to the reality of the God consciousness that permeates everything. The link between practicing gratitude and living from the consciousness of the present moment is the very reason for which you might often hear people discussing gratitude in connection with manifestation. So manifestation is the practice of using your God-given state of creativity to attract and create the life you choose and focus upon in your mind. As copies of the creator, we human beings are unlimited 
and our ability to create our reality through the power of our mind. So the thoughts and beliefs we choose become the circumstances that we attract. It is your birthright, in other words, to create as God or the universe creates through the power of the mind. The divine intelligence within you is shaping the fabric of the forms you experience. Once you begin to realize this, you might find yourself feeling like you're standing at the threshold of a great and powerful treasure. Because if you can learn how to change your thoughts, beliefs, and overall mental focus, you can change anything you desire without limitation. It is the business of learning how to change and cultivate your thoughts and mental state that can maybe seem a little bit tricky for some. For in doing this, we are required not to go into a hyperdrive of controlling our every thought and word, fearing that a single negative statement might undo what we're trying to manifest. Rather, we're required to do the opposite if you want to successfully manifest. Rather than control each thought, maybe swimming against the currents of life and consciousness, we are empowered when we surrender to the flow and we allow the current of life to carry us. There's a famous saying that goes, what you resist persists. In other words, when you focus on over controlling your thoughts in the effort to manifest something new, you're often focusing more on negating what you do not want rather than amplifying what you do want. This kind of state of consciousness would have you more aware of the lack of what you want um, but do not have than upon the experience of being fulfilled when you receive what you want. And it's much better to, of course, amplify what you do want, the experience of joy and fulfillment, than of focusing on what you lack. The practice of unconditional gratitude places your ego, along with any and all blockages to manifestation, aside so that you can truly allow yourself to receive what you desire. Cultivating gratitude centers your consciousness upon the joy of fulfillment. This very literally raises your spiritual vibration. In a state of fulfillment, gratitude and joy and the simplicity of life, you make yourself a vibrational match for what you want and thereby come into alignment with what you want and then it appears in front of you as physical manifested form and experience. And I'll share a story on how this came about in my own life. So years ago, I was in a place in my life in which I felt quite lost with regard to finding any kind of direction or success in my career and finances. You see, I graduated college in 2008 when the housing market collapsed and the economy took a nosedive into recession. It was very hard for any young person without job experiences to kind of enter the job market and start a real career. So many of us kind of struggled with what to do and how to support ourselves. And many of you probably remember that. At that time in my life, I had a strong burning passion to help other people. I wanted to use my spiritual gifts to heal and uplift people. And I wanted to bring beauty into the world through music and art and connecting with people. I also, of course, wanted to be able to support myself financially, as we all do. I remember spending so many moments during that time praying and affirming that I would find my path to put my life purpose dreams into action. I also prayed desperately to receive some kind of job opportunity anything would suffice at that point because I found that even applying for an hourly wage as a waitress at a restaurant or as a cashier at a clothing store was highly competitive. You would walk in to apply for one of these jobs and they would tell you that 50 other applicants or more had already been there before you and that some of them maybe had master's degrees and were even more qualified than you were. 
eventually in that situation, I found two part-time minimum wage jobs, one working as a restaurant cashier and one working for a call center where you try to sell things by cold calling people. Not a very (laughs) peaceful job. (laughs) Both of these jobs were pretty high stress. Um, And I barely ever had any time off. So um, in addition, it was hard to pay the bills. So it really just, it it was kind of a stressful time. Well, one day I was walking to a nearby park, one of my rare days where I had an afternoon off. I love to spend time meditating near the trees. That was my peace. And at one point, spending that time in nature, the present moment really emerged for me, such that everything was imbued with beauty. I really felt deeply grateful for my life in that moment. All of the worry and despair over having these two difficult, seemingly meaningless jobs that didn't pay very much just suddenly disappeared. It was like an invisible weight that I was normally unaware of carrying had suddenly lifted. And then for the next hour or so, I wanted nothing but to bask in the simplicity of the joy I had accessed and tapped into in that moment. I fed my mind continually with thoughts that gave way to more and more peace. And I thought to myself, you know, I don't really need much in life to be happy we, none of us do. We just need ourselves. I needed myself and simple, beautiful moments like that one. Even if I were to live a hundred years old and never do more than I was doing now in my career and finances, I realized I'd be fine. I could easily imagine a peaceful, fulfilling life growing around the lifestyle I had right then and there. I could imagine a life in which I would still help people, even if I didn't do it professionally. I could imagine being very happy if that was what the universe wished to give me. And who was I to not trust what the universe was giving me? I trusted in the life that I had right then. Rather than focusing so much on the deficit of what I did not have and worrying and scraping and uh, grasping to try to get more and become something different, I decided to love the life that I had. I chose to be grateful. I felt that everything was perfect and I knew that I'd always have the simplicity and the joy of the present moment to be thankful for. And that was enough to feed my whole life life. Well, after that, things started to change, you might imagine. The chronic stress that I lived with started to dissipate. More opportunities to make life changes started arriving. I moved to a new location. I attracted a deeply fulfilling, peaceful job that made my life much uh, just more uh, peaceful. I was making a little bit more money and I was working as a nanny at that time. So that was a big step up for me because I felt that I had truly taken a step to suddenly be able to help people. I manifested a job where I was really helping people by caring for and teaching little children. And that felt very spiritual to me. That felt very, very peaceful, and I was grateful for it. Yeah, sometimes moments of doubt or fear could still set back in. I would sometimes worry that I still needed a better, more supportive job or worry about all the things that I wanted that I seemed not to have. But then I would remember that day among the trees, and I would go back to my state of gratitude. That was such a powerful moment. And I would recall that all I needed to do was to pause to notice the beauty and simplicity of the present moment. And then remember that everything was just perfect. I could find happiness right now, regardless of any of the changing conditions around me. So I resolved to practice gratitude unconditionally for everything that life showed me, with the knowledge that our surface consciousness is quite limited, that what we might from our ego immediately knee-jerk judge as something we don't want and then resist might be the very answer you have to a prayer. So unconditionally, I practice gratitude. And the more I practice gratitude and fulfillment for the life I had, the more I seemed to actually attract positive changes. Soon I received inspiration to begin coaching and healing others spiritually. 
in the early years of my work as a healer, I actually did almost nothing to advertise my work except to make up some business cards. But people started showing up. Through word of mouth alone, I suddenly had enough clients to really say that being a self-employed spiritual healer really was my job. And the, the growth kept coming. I really attribute practicing gratitude to being the breakthrough key to finally allowing myself to receive the things that I had been praying for. Rumi says, wear gratitude like a cloak and it will feed every corner of your life. (laughs) I love that. And this is true. You almost don't need to spend time overly focusing on or praying for all the specifics of the things that you need or want. The divine intelligence within you that drives the world has an intimate knowledge of what you need and understands it better than your conscious mind does. Cultivating gratitude and fulfillment can do nothing but attract more reasons to feed and expand those feelings of gratitude and fulfillment. You will attract reasons to feel grateful and recognize life's magic in every area of life without even trying to, just by practicing gratitude. Remember, too, that to be happy is our collective spiritual purpose. And there's no reason, no matter the circumstances around you, that you don't have access to finding simplicity and happiness right now. And yes, you're allowed to want more things, but be happy and joyful and celebrate what you have now. Cultivating gratitude and fulfillment in your life is good for the collective. Sharing your gratitude and joy in life through things like celebration, celebration especially with others, is incredibly healthy and good for humanity. And I'll share another story. I recall several experiences during my early 20s when I'd go to a concert or a party or something like that and suddenly become acutely aware of the collective energy in the room. I wasn't always very grounded in my spiritual awareness at that time. So oftentimes I'd find myself sort of floating up into this state of awareness where I'd be acutely aware that there was a collective consciousness in the room, that there was an energy net that collected everybody at the level of the crown chakra and above. And I would see that the more people that jumped up into a state of joy or released themselves and let themselves express themselves freely, the more this net of collective consciousness would really expand and create something beautiful that seemed to lift up the whole of everyone around me. And that seemed rather profound. And I found that the more that I let go and let myself have fun, the more that it contributed to that. It created a little bit of a ripple effect around me. I used to get together with my friends and dream up the most eccentric kinds of parties. I really loved to be the one throwing the parties at that time in my life. So we would dream up these eccentric kinds of celebratory experiences. And we would create these sort of things and thought of ourselves sort of as the orchestrators of our own kind of art happening kind of a thing. (laughs) We'd throw these parties in the middle of the woods at secret locations and just tell a few people and see who would come. But the reason I loved doing this at that time was because I noticed that there was an immensely meaningful, powerful thing that could happen when people got together in the ritual of celebrating and having fun, of literally generating more joy and gratitude in the present moment of life. Bringing out the wonderment, playfulness, or childlike joy in other people brought the energy and vibe of the whole group upwards. There would be these moments where you could really tell that people were getting in touch with a playful, happy side of themselves that maybe they hadn't seen in years. Walls were coming down, and people were really lifting one another up, and it was so beautiful to see how powerfully we could affect one another. So that was a really interesting moment. I believe that we are here with the option to create heaven on earth by simply deciding to be happy and fulfilled and cultivating this in our consciousness. And sometimes merely cultivating that gratitude, celebration, and fulfillment in your own life is enough to fulfill that purpose. I recall a few moments in my life in which I would hear about suffering in different places on the planet. 
I would hear about people who lived in life's, lives where the only option that they had were to live in these factory jobs that where they were working very, very hard and being paid very little, places where there were there was war and great poverty. And I'm a very sensitive person emotionally and pick up on energy very, very sensitively. And I would find myself just almost on my knees praying in those moments, calling on the angels saying, oh, what can I do? Do I need to pick up everything and go to these places to help? And for some people, yes, that is your purpose to go and do that if you're being called personally to do that. But for me in those moments, I was given a very simple message that said, you know, just being in a state of consciousness where you can bring more sweetness to life, more joy, more celebration, more hope, more light, and more goodness through simple acts, this is enough to create a wave of energy that wraps around the world and, yes, will eventually come to those people who are in war-torn areas or dealing with poverty or unfair um, kinds of situations. So that was my message that I received from the angels to keep shining my own life, my own light right where I was in my life. Life on earth has all the ingredients necessary to be a literal garden of Eden. All of our needs and desires, whether physical, emotional, or spiritual, have the potential to be fulfilled right here, and even further to evolve and expand into infinitely more and more joy and beauty and creativity. This is a magical planet, and it's a miraculous life that we live. And we have the choice to experience it as such, as magical, miraculous, happy, and beautiful. And the choice comes easier to us than you'd think. Start by finding joy in the simplicity of the present moment. Breathe and be still. Perhaps luxuriate in the miraculous joy of the simple things and cultivate your gratitude and wonder when you watch the rain tap on your window or see the birds flying or when you take a bite of delicious food or read an exciting book. The more you cultivate your gratitude and peace of mind in the ordinary, the more extraordinary your life becomes. And the stronger your foundation of gratitude and trust in life becomes when life's difficulties arise. There is a a Buddhist prayer that actually asks for difficulties. Can you imagine asking or praying for difficulties? It goes something like, may I be given the appropriate difficulties so that my heart can truly open with compassion. Wow, what a prayer. So trust, accept, and allow the difficulties you receive as well as the good things in your life. Be grateful for everything. The universe upholds your highest interest in each and every situation. There is not a need to logically explain or reason why things might perhaps be working in your favor because to cultivate gratitude in the face of adversity is an act of faith. It reaches for a state that is beyond the limitations of the reasoning, analyzing, thinking mind. To overanalyze the difficult things is really just another form of resisting the flow of life, of allowing the ego to sit in the driver's seat and to see things maybe from the eyes of fear. But when we practice gratitude for the difficulties that arise in our lives, it is only then that you begin to see the pearls of wisdom and the shining gifts that arise as a result. For example, in my own experiences, when my mother was dying of cancer, I moved home to live with my parents for a year so that I could take care of her. There was no debate in my mind. as I simply knew that this is what I needed to do. So I left a master's degree program in California. I moved home to Michigan and lived as my mother's 24-hour nurse. Perhaps some people would look at that and go, oh my gosh, that's really hard. Not only are you losing a family member whom you love, but you're disrupting your life, your plan. You're uprooting, you're changing so much. I have to say that this was one of the best times of my life. Make no mistake, it is one of the hardest things that I've probably ever experienced, but the amount of love 
strength and hope that came through that time was an irreplaceable gift for me. And I'm grateful to this day for what my mother taught me about the grace of death and dying and for showing me the miracle of what it was to see someone return home to heaven when our physical lives have ended. So that time of difficulty was incredibly beautiful. No matter how much suffering or difficulty or tears, no matter how much came through it. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross once wrote, should you shield the valleys from the windstorms, you would never see the beauty of their canyons. And to be honest, it is the ego that wants our lives to be quote unquote perfect, where everything is only going to be easy and carefree. I firmly believe that we can create and access the constant presence of light, love and miraculousness in all experiences that we have. But this is in no way um, something that means we should reject experiences that aren't all good, that aren't all cupcakes and roses and easiness. The tough stuff is part of the humanness of the journey you choose when your soul decides to incarnate into this lifetime. Challenges bring the opportunity for great wisdom and strength. They are certainly not the mandatory prerequisite or only way to get at wisdom and grace, but my God, are these experiences truly something valuable to the soul? Because in the face of adversity, you stand in an incredibly powerful opportunity to choose love. Love transcends even the most difficult of human experiences we could imagine. To choose love and faith and trust and allow the flow of life to move through you, even in the most difficult of times, is to choose transcendence of all human limitations. You expand the power of love and compassion for all of humanity each time you choose it in your own life. And in fact, this brings to mind a poem that I remember, and the author of this poem is actually not known because this poem was found scratched into the walls of a concentration camp after the Holocaust of World War II. And the words of this poem were, I believe in the sun, even when it is not shining. I believe in love, even when feeling it not. I believe in God, even when God is silent. Can you imagine the state of grace that the author of this poem was in when they wrote those words? I mean, I think that's absolutely incredible, absolutely beautiful. To me, the beauty of that reflects a transcendence of the suffering of that experience in which the constants of love and divinity reigns immutable and supreme over all things. It's just beautiful. Now, there is an area in which I think that we have the opportunity to practice gratitude where it's worth shining a little spotlight on our discussion for today. And that's in talking about bringing gratitude into our relationships. So first, know that all relationships you have with others in this life are based on your relationship with yourself. If you have a strong, healthy, and truly loving relationship with yourself, you will attract those same qualities in your relationships with other people, which is why it is so important to turn your consciousness of gratitude upon yourself. Be grateful and appreciate you. So many of us get caught up in the race of what we are doing in our lives. After all, our current culture is quite focused upon what we do, what we have or accomplish in the outer world. But in the words of Wayne Dyer, you are not a human doing, you are a human being. Stop and take time to appreciate your beingness. 
take the time to notice and appreciate yourself. Congratulate yourself when you grow. Congratulate yourself on your bravery through difficult times. Congratulate yourself on your accomplishments and your achievements and your values. This is an immensely important thing to do, especially when you're looking to achieve anything new in your life. If you want to write a book, lose weight, start a business, create a work of art, heal your emotions, or do anything that requires big changes and achievements that test your strength, it is necessary to stop and appreciate your progress as you move towards those goals. Remember, cultivating gratitude for the way things are now is an amazing way to allow yourself to receive more to be grateful for. And then you allow changes to occur to bring more good. So in appreciating and celebrating the fact that you lost four pounds, even though you still maybe have 20 more to go, you're actually supporting and speeding up the process of losing the other 20. You're feeding and activating the inspiration, energy, and power within you to transcend your limits and manifest your dreams. Love yourself by being grateful for yourself and all that you are and do no matter what. As you practice this, you'll feel more and more that you truly are unlimited in what you can achieve and become. And also, of course, in your relationship with others, gratitude is the salve that heals misunderstandings and develops beautiful love and trust. Even when you find yourself in difficult places with the ones that you love, it can be helpful to spend time focusing upon and communicating what you're grateful for in them. It cultivates the relationship's strengths so that you can work on its challenges or imbalances as a collaborative unit rather than as opposing forces. Gratitude nourishes relationships because it cultivates compassion and patience. And when you set out to cultivate more gratitude in your life and your relationships, you can really learn quite a lot from that because authentic gratitude or lack thereof represents your relationship with receiving. Many people find it much easier to give than receive, you'll notice. This makes it hard for them to feel grateful when they're on the receiving end of a gift, a favor, appreciation, or love. They maybe look embarrassed or uncomfortable instead. If you notice this occurring in your life, it can be very useful because it indicates that you have some resistance to receiving, to move, and to heal inside yourself. So then play with receiving gratefully, receiving fully and joyfully when someone gives something to you, whether it's a favor, a compliment, or a gift. Let people care for you and love you, and you'll subconsciously be opening your arms to receive not only from others, but also from the universe, thereby uplifting your manifestations in life as well. Gratitude is incredibly healing, and even physically healing, because it can act as an antidote to physical stress and uplift your physical health. Gratitude calms the body. The body. It gives way to trust and comfort and peace with the forces of life, making you feel safe. This is a natural antidote to the overproduction of adrenaline, cortisol, and histamine that many in our modern world who are chronically stressed experience. Gratitude signals the body, the mind, and the spirit to remember that we are safe. The calm of safety gives your body peace. It improves your health and of course, gives you wisdom to find the highest perspective in life situations. So let's receive these healing benefits of gratitude together right now. We're going to go into a guided meditation to cultivate the energy of gratitude that we'll share together. And if you're listening in the right environment for it, you can go ahead and relax and get comfortable. Go ahead and close your eyes if you're ready to do so and begin to relax your body. Take in several long, deep healing breaths. Feel your every cell shift to a state of receptivity.
feel the universal love of the cosmos flowing into every particle of your being as waves of light with each breath that you take. Breathing in light, health, well-being, and goodness. Allow this light to calm your mind. Feel as your thoughts begin to grow still. Allow yourself to simply rest peacefully and observe the present moment. Notice that the more present you become, the more your awareness expands. You become aware of all parts of your being at once, aligned in this focal point of stillness in the now. You become aware that your consciousness does not stop with you but extends out into the universe as a whole. As your consciousness expands, your awareness grows. Allow yourself to see and feel the magic of life. Rest and observe and allow your consciousness to deliver to you exactly what it wants to show you to be grateful for. See the beauty in the small things. Let your appreciation and gratitude extend into every cell of your body. Feeling your gratitude moving into gratitude for your eyes, for your hands, for your feet, your legs, your arms, for your thoughts, your emotions, your feelings, for all that you know and all that you do. See your appreciation spreading into the human beings around you in your life. And then notice that gratitude spreading all around the world into each human being with whom you share consciousness now. Allow this gratitude to spread into every living creature, every animal, every plant, all the spirits and life forms of the universe, one family, one self. You are one with God, one with the Creator in this moment. Merge with the incredible love gratitude and appreciation that the Creator constantly feels for creation. A group of angels now comes forth surrounding you with their joyful smiles and happiness. 
Allow your angels to celebrate with you in this moment, to help amplify your state of joy and fulfillment. As you gaze into their happy, loving eyes, feel their joy reflected through you like you have become their mirror. Feel your energy uplifting towards greater and greater joy, love, trust, and peace. Celebrate for a moment. Allow your being to express its deep joy. And now, ask your consciousness what area of your life might really benefit from your shining your gratitude and appreciation upon it now. Focus quietly upon that area of life. Send it love. Send it gratitude. See it from the eyes of God. Notice your trust in life growing and renewing. You might be beginning to realize that there is nothing to fear or worry about in this world. All is well. With your next deep breath, bring your focus and your presence back into your body. Breathing that gratitude right back into your own heart. Feeling grateful for your life force. Breathe your presence down into your fingertips and into your toes. Feel your connection with the earth and allow yourself to ground and center once again. And take just one more deep breath to pull into the present moment. And then on your exhale, gently open your eyes. And you can begin to shift right back into the room, back into your moment. Into the physical here and now. Beautiful. Thank you so much for that moment. We truly uplift one another when we join in meditation, and that is something that really does help the world as a whole, no matter whether you're listening live or whether you're meditating with us on rebroadcast, we create a timeless space that sends healing and love to everybody. So now I would love to hear from you guys. Now is the time to call in if you'd like to ask a question or share a story or request an angel reading. The number to do so is 240-979-6366. That's 240-979-6366. And today we are going to be working with the Archangel Oracle cards, as well as the Angel Tarot cards. These were the ones I felt guided to today. So you're welcome to request either one if you want. Um, and we will we will start. So while we're waiting for our first caller, I will go ahead and pull some cards for the group. Let's start with the angel tarot cards. We're going to pick just two here to begin with. And our third card will be from the archangels deck. And we'll just intend as I'm shuffling these cards 
for this message to have to do with exactly what you need to hear to heal your life today. I'm getting a message from the angels saying that there are many people who have been feeling overwhelmed um, and stressed in life or sometimes even emotionally drained, a little bit tapped out. Um, So if you've been feeling that way, this message is for you. This guidance is for you on how you can clear and heal that. Our first card from the Angel Tarot, wow, our first card is the Six of Fire. So whenever you see the Six of Fire, this is a card that essentially represents victory and success and good things or that there is good news on the way that maybe you haven't seen the success or the victory or the good things or the answered prayers maybe coming through quite yet, but that that's totally okay because there's some kind of a breakthrough help that's coming in. The answer to your prayers is coming. Your ship is on, is coming in. It's on its way. Um, and you will receive what you need. Um, so that's the reality. I'm hearing your angels say that that is the foundation of what there is in your life, no matter what you might be seeing, no matter what the surface looks like or what you're focusing on right now, whether you've got worries or strain or anything like that, underneath everything We're getting this feeling that everything is going to work out okay. There is victory and success on the way. And even as well, I have to say too, with Six of Fire, this is a card that represents oftentimes that other people will also be able to recognize that goodness. So it's not usually just a victory or a success that personally only affects you. It's going to be a uh, personal victory that actually affects um all areas of your life such that other other people can recognize it and see it or you, you are um, succeeding and people know it. So you are succeeding and people are sharing in it. Your second card that we got um, also from Angel Tarot is the Two of Air. Two of Air. So this is a really useful card to get. When you see Two of Air, our air suit in the tarot, which is usually in traditional tarot, the sword suit, When you see this suit come up, it usually helps us to face the challenges or difficulties in life. It has to do with the tough stuff. So the angels had said, we're getting guidance on the things that need healing. And my gosh, they delivered. Because two of air indicates that oftentimes there are struggles that are going on in our lives where if we feel like it's us against the world or we feel like we're in a state of conflict um, or disagreement with someone or something in our lives. Does this describe you right now? <laughs> it might. And if, if, if there is something that's felt really stuck, that hasn't really, you know, kind of moved forward for you and you've really, really needed a breakthrough and you needed a change, this card essentially says it's time to get decisive and to look at this from a different angle. When we see two of air, it says that the way things are in the ego is that it's indecisive, it's stuck, it's at a stalemate. The advice that it gives is to rise above the ego, move beyond the ego. And once you do that, perhaps through a state of gratitude, just as we said, you'll get into a really, really, really powerful place where you're able to see the solutions that are available to you. You're able to see what you need. Let's go to our final card from the Archangels deck to see what the outcome will be for you in your healing situation. Um, And this is the peace card. Um, So the peace card is wonderful to get as the third card because usually um, you'll get a past, present, and future when you're doing a three-card spread. And as the third card, this is sort of like the outcome, the future, what's going to happen out of your current situation. You receive peace, peace. Peace comes when you remember that the struggles or the worries that you have, in fact, are not real. That only love is real and that no matter what adversity you might be facing, focus on love and love allows you to transcend anything that might be tough or stressful or overwhelming. I'm also hearing your angels add in the guidance that it would be helpful for you to rest a little bit more at this time. They're saying that the collective energy on earth at this time right now is a bit intense. There are a lot of transitions going on, especially since there are seasonal, big seasonal transitions going on with the environment, um, you know, kind of changing 
whether you're in the Northern Hemisphere or the Southern Hemisphere. And when big shifts like this happen, a lot of times people feel the need sometimes to sleep and rest just a little bit more to focus on themselves, on self-care a little bit more than they're focusing on um, worry or on what you're doing, your tasks, your responsibilities. Um, So definitely take a retreat. This is a good time for that. So I am getting a message that we have uh, Shannon, um, who's not able to call in, but who would like a reading for today. Um, so we are absolutely happy to do that. Um, and any, if anybody else um, is not able to call in, but would like a reading, you can certainly send a message um, to Project Bring Me to Life, perhaps in the chat room on Project Bring Me to Life.com or even on the, their Facebook page. I'm sure um, we'd probably be able to see the messages there, hopefully. Um, but so for Shannon, let's go ahead and uh, pull some cards for you, my dear. So I am feeling guided towards pulling some cards from the Angel Tarot. So we're going to do that. And right now for you, Shannon, one of the guides that I'm feeling coming through very strong, two guides, you've got Archangel Chamuel and Archangel Jophiel working very, very closely with you. So Archangel Chamuel is the angel of peace oftentimes associated with perceiving or seeing. Um, People call him the finding angel sometimes because you can find lost objects with Archangel Chamuel's help. Um, But more than that, it's like he is the sight of God, the sight of God. So it's this higher perception, all things that brings an incredible peace and incredible love. Um, Chamuel is working through you right now, Shannon, and helping to bring more peace and um, just happiness to all areas of your life. He's saying that when you feel more peaceful, more calm, you're able to deliver um, really, really beautiful gifts to others through your work in your life. And that comes from feeding yourself with your calm first. He says you're doing a wonderful job at that as well, but to continue really keeping that as a more of a priority than anything else. Um, and he says that sometimes that can be a challenge, especially when you're a creative doer and a go-getter like you are. Um, they're showing us as well, you've got Archangel Jophiel. So Archangel Jophiel is the angel of beauty. And the angel of beauty is coming through today saying that part of your life purpose is beauty, is to bring beauty into the world and that you are a beacon of hope and beauty for other people. Um, they're saying that as a light worker, you are very much a light worker, that you are holding down the fort, so to speak, for uh, love and light in this world and you know, combined effort with other light workers that are out there, but you're doing so in a very unique, special way. And just by virtue of your existence on planet Earth right now, um, they're saying your sweetness, your charm, your hopefulness, your perspective, just your consciousness being here is already making a difference, no matter what other action steps you might take. Um, so Archangel Jophiel says she, she, she channels her own energy through you quite a lot. Turning over your cards now, you've got some really interesting cards that have come up, powerful cards too. Your first card is is the sun card. Um, This card is usually a card in the tarot that represents a lot of happiness and success. And this is actually really interesting um, because we had gotten that as a card before when we we saw the victory message come through as the first card for our group reading today. This card essentially says that you you are bound for um, a, a happy outcome and that there are brilliant new ideas coming to you now that are going to be leading you to success. So have confidence and continue to plant seeds and to go forward. Um, so the sun card is what you have. The second card is the empress card. So you've got two major arcana cards in a row and both of these cards um, are big representations of major life shifts. So when we see the major arcana come through, it's like there's a big chapter about to change in your life. There's something big you're about to do, accomplish, or experience. It's not just the everyday life changes. So Shannon, when the empress comes in, oh my gosh, it's the sign of lavish abundance and giving birth to your dreams. Your angels are also saying that you are an immense nurturer. You've got like the sign of the divine um, mother, the archetype of divine mother working so powerfully through you right now in your life. So continue to nurture yourself and others and know that you are very steadily bringing your dreams to fruition. Um, Wow, two very successful cards right in a row for Shannon. Um, And then her third card from the Tarot is the Six of Air. Six of Air is a card that represents that things are looking up and that if there were some, 
I just got a little message on our that we've got some technical difficulties coming through, but that's okay. Um, so we'll just continue for Shannon, and then we've got a couple other readings that we'll just do from the from the chat rooms, from the messages that we got. Um, but through the six of air, it's essentially just saying that for you, Shannon, it's the end of any trying situations where in the past it was hard to get things off the ground or working or moving forward. When we see six of air, it means you've seen the horizon where the sun is shining and coming through, and there are some really great things about to happen. So um, expect a journey to begin. That's really wonderful. Have hope. And I pulled a bonus card for you lastly from the Archangels deck, and it's the creative writing card. I just had to share that because so much of that creative energy comes through you, um, and creative writing feels like it's one big area for you to shine, Shannon. So thank you for requesting a reading. Um, So it looks like we have two others that have requested a reading through the chat. And right now, it looks as like uh, as as though our calling service is not working. Um, So that's okay, you guys don't worry about trying to call in now since our, um, it looks like our phone lines are down. Little technical difficulties, totally okay. Um, but we have Anna who sent a message to Project Bring Me to Life, um, who is requesting a reading. So, Anna, for you, thank you so much for uh, requesting your reading. I'm going to pull some cards um, first from the Archangels deck. I'm feeling really drawn towards these for you. So, the first two will be from the Archangels. And then your third card is going to be from the Angel to row deck. Um, So let's see what your angels want to tell you today, my dear. Right away as I'm tuning into your energy, I'm also getting a lot of creativity. That must be a theme with you guys today. Um, I'm feeling beautiful sounds and beautiful music have the ability to uplift your energy right now and to bring more inspiration into play. You have very, very high resonating guides or ascended masters that work with you, Anna, and they are able to communicate more and more clearly with you or to send you inspiration the more that you literally raise your vibration and for some reason they're showing us music that music has the ability to raise your vibration perhaps the most Um, so that's super awesome let's turn over your cards and see what we get for you today Oh boy. So you've got some good things about to happen to you in your life, particularly in your career, it looks like from the cards. So your first message is the spread your wings card from the Archangel deck. The spread your wings card essentially says that you are ready now to take a really independent stance on your own path. You don't need to wait for a collaboration or for anyone else's permission or anything like that to step forward and to do what you want to do. Get your creative projects off the ground It is time to start moving forward. The timing is absolutely perfect. You are qualified. You are ready to soar. Um, So move forward now. You're ready to spread your wings and get independent. Your second card from the Archangel's deck is the Archangel Haniel card with the message of sensitivity. Sensitivity. So Anna, you may have been feeling extra sensitive um, to energies and emotions right now. And your angels are saying not only to your own emotions and energies, but to other people's as well. Um, Keep this in hand. Keep this knowledge in hand. The things that you're picking up on through your sensitivity are actually the ways that your spirit guides um, and the universe is trying to communicate to you where you your your energy and your thoughts and your focuses would best be served. So perhaps there's a situation or even a relationship or anything like that in your life right now where you're not able to shine the most. You're not able to express and shine your light the best and do your your highest work. If that's so, start taking some gradual steps as you feel guided to do so um, to transition into something that will serve your sensitivity better and will allow you, as they said before, to spread your wings. Um, So very beautiful. Your third card. Now, this is what made me think, oh, my gosh, career growth. It's the Ace of Fire card from the Angel Tarot. So Ace of Fire is a really probably the best, most powerful card that you can get um, from the tarot when you're asking about what will happen with my career. It's the one of two cards in all the the cards in the tarot that represents that there's a wish coming true. And one of them that represents a wish coming true in your love life or your emotions, personal stuff. The other one is a wish coming true in your career. And you got the career one. So Ace of Fire, Ace of Fire comes through. This means that there's an exciting opportunity for you right around the corner with some career advancement. You've got the ability to make some great effective changes in your life now. So really go for it. Take some action. Continue to listen to your guides um, and go for it. You are are ready to shine. Um, So our next uh, 
caller. Well, we've got Kristen that has uh, requested a reading as well in the chat. So thank you so much, Kristen, for calling in. We are going to pull some cards for you. And once again, I'm feeling uh, called towards two of the Archangel cards and one card from the Angel Tarot. So let's see what they give us. Um, Right away, your angels are sending you a lot of comfort right now, dear Kristen. They're sending you a lot of comfort. So if you've been dealing with anything that's been in any way maybe overwhelming or stressful or you've had some question marks in your life where you don't know what direction you're supposed to be headed, what's coming next, what's going to support me next, what am I going to do next, your angels are sending you comfort and they're telling you to keep the faith and trust. Your first card is remember who you are from the Archangel's deck with Archangel Michael. Archangel Michael wants you to know that he is shielding you and protecting you beautifully at this time, as well as your loved ones, the people that are close to you. Um, it looks like they're really being protected. You are incredible, pow- incredibly powerful and loving and situated to make positive changes in this time. Get quiet, listen and pray to the angels and connect with them, and they will give you messages on the simple action steps that you can start to take now to turn around and change your situation. Remember that you are powerful. Particularly for you, this feels as if it may have to do with putting up a boundary in your life with someone or something that has not really been working out so harmoniously. So just keep that in mind as you kind of evaluate the areas where you're empowered to start making some changes. Your second card is the courage card from Archangel Ariel in the Archangel's deck. Courage says this change that you're being called to make right now is going to require some assertiveness. So rather, again, than waiting for permission from someone else, that's yet another theme that we've got for the whole group today, it feels like. Rather than waiting for permission, um, take the bull by the horns. You are ready to start and be the leader of your situation right now. You be the decisive one. Don't wait around for anyone else to fix things things or change things for you, you've got to be the one to claim um, the good that you want in your life now. So this is a card that's all about action steps too. It says, hold your ground. Yes, put up those boundaries when you need to. Raise your standards to an even higher place so that you only accept perfect respect, love, and things that honor and work with you for your life and for your loved ones. Um, Stand up for that. That's really going to be important. And the result of that is really great news for you. The result of that from the tarot deck is your third and final card is the world card. The world card represents incredible success, contentment, and peace where all areas of your life that would include relationships, job, living situation, anything you can think of will all align under the world card representing we've got universal peace and harmony in all of those areas based on the guidance of the changes that you're being pushed to make now. Even if those changes feel like they're taking you out of your comfort zone, that is totally okay. Just keep going and know that you're on a path towards peace, happiness, and even enlightenment, there feels as if there are spiritual messages and growth that, are, that that will be coming through your current situation. So, wow. Thank you guys so much for submitting your questions through the chat a little differently than we do it usually today. But know that you can always do that if you're having trouble getting through on the um, phone lines. And we'll work out our, our technological bugs, <laughs> of course. Um, but for now, we're coming to the end of our show. Oh, it, it time flies, doesn't it? <laughs> thank you so much for listening, you guys. Remember that I will will be live every month on Project Rumi to Life, bringing you spiritual discussions and angel messages. Mark your calendars for Thursday, December 21st at 1230 p.m. Eastern for our next show, which will be on the day of the winter solstice, which is so special. We'll be discussing solstice and sacred stories that bring light into our hearts. So definitely tune in for that show. It's one not to miss. And of course, all of the podcasts are recorded and available to listen to on iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube at Spreaker.com. That's S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com. And on the app for Android Stitcher, that's S-T-I-T-C-H-E-R. I'll be posting the YouTube links for the podcast on my social media pages if you'd like to listen in again or share this with a friend. And you can connect with me on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Sarah Hall 1111. 
1111, S-A-R-A-H-H-A-L-L 1111, or follow me on Twitter at Seraphim 444, that's S-E-R-R-A-P-H-I-M 444, or follow me on Instagram at S-A-R-A-H-H-A-L-L 444, Sarah Hall 444. And of course, if you would like to connect with me for a private reading, spiritual coaching, or healing session, you can visit my website at sarahhall.com. That's www.sarahhall.com. I hope you guys have a beautiful day and know that I am sending you all of my love. Bye.